and the family of a Kinnegad man who died off the coast of County Galway earlier this week following a group dive is preparing to lay him to rest tomorrow. 49-year-old Kieran Flynn was a religious studies teacher and an experienced diver who got into difficulty after resurfacing near Inishbofin. Although he was airlifted to hospital in Castle Bar, he was pronounced dead a short time later. It is the second blow for the family in quick succession after his father passed away earlier this year. Now let's have a broader discussion about water safety and just to put the scale of tragedies across the country in context. Here's a comment made by Roger Sweeney, the Deputy CEO of Irish Water Safety on Monday's main evening news here on Midlands 103. Drowning hasn't gone away. Uh, we still average about five drownings every fortnight. So with uh, warm weather still ahead of us, people need to remember that uh, 80% of drownings occur uh, with in the victim's own environment, uh, in, certainly within their own county. And unfortunately, about a third of drownings involve the consumption of alcohol. So please remember, in 2012, 162 people died on our roads. Only 15 fewer drowned in our waters. I'd like you to meet Niall Stapleton. He's an experienced diver. He's a former National Diving Officer with the Irish Underwater Council. Niall, good morning. Good morning, Will. How are you? Very well, thank you. We won't talk about any specific case, but I suppose you could look at experienced divers getting into difficulty, amateur swimmers also getting into difficulty, and wonder, are accidents inevitable? Will they just happen? Or is there some obvious measure we can take to prevent these tragedies? Well, at the outset, Will, if I could, um, on behalf of the Irish Underwater Council and our over 2,000 members, I would like to express our condolences to the families, to the friends and the diving buddies of um, the recently deceased divers in Ireland. Um, make, you make a very good point. Um, you know, we do choose to, to go out on the water. We do choose to enjoy the water. Um, in the Irish Underwater Council, we, we would make the, the distinction between an adventure sport and a dangerous sport. We, we regard diving, scuba diving, as an adventure sport, and that's why we do it and why we love it. We don't, we don't regard it as a dangerous sport, though, and um, to mitigate risk and to mitigate um, any possible danger, we, we do a huge amount of training. Uh, we have a, a large network of clubs around the, the, the country who, whose primary focus is, is safety and whose secondary focus is enjoyment. So if a diving club member wishes to go on, a, say, an offshore dive, how yeah. much training would they be required to undertake before doing that? Well, typically the, the training starts for, for a brand new diver, if you like. Would, the, the training starts in the autumn time before they'll ever see the open water. And there's a lot of um, there's a lot of pool work. There'll be um, probably 10 to 12 weeks of, of, of pool work in, an, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the safe environment of a swimming pool with experienced instructors in, in a club. They learn basic snorkel skills um, before they even start using scuba equipment, and then they progress to, uh, to scuba to the use of scuba equipment. There's an extensive suite of lectures that uh, that they will undergo as well. What sort of topics will be covered in the lectures? Well, all, all sorts. There's the introduction to the equipment that they will be using. There's a, a big emphasis on physics. Obviously, physics has a big part to play in, in water, how we how our bodies and how gases and equipment behave under increased uh, water pressure and there's uh, lectures around uh, handling um, handling emergencies or handling incidents underwater so um so the the, the new diver is, is, is very well prepared for uh, for open water diving and then even when he does start to, to open water diving we're not going offshore straight away anyway there's there's diving uh, we, we call it shore diving where the diver will be diving in maybe four or five meters again getting used to getting used to the, the buddy system of diving with another diver who's, who's an instructor if the person is under instruction and getting used to being underwater and just and just familiarizing themselves with with the, the new the new environment and then as the dive increase and the experience increases um, the uh, the diver will, will start to um, uh, boat diving and, and move further offshore and, and dive maybe a little bit deeper as well. And using the buddy system, what sort of communication would there be between a diver who's learning and their instructor once they're beneath the waves? 
Well, one of the lectures that I mentioned earlier is the, of the suite of lectures. There's a whole lecture dedicated to hand signals, and there's a very extensive suite of I, I would I would estimate probably 20 to 25 hand signals that the that the new diver will learn and that all divers are practicing. And these and these signals, especially the essential signals, will be practiced before every dive. There's the before before every dive, we have what we call the buddy check, where you have you, the, the partner that you're going to be diving with are sitting opposite one another, and we go through all the pieces of gear that we're using, and we go through the the essential the essential um, hand signals in order to allow um, clear communication under the water. And for example, these hand signals can communicate what type of messages? Well, the essential one is, are you okay? So that, so if you you can ask by um, hold, holding up your hand with and doing kind of an O with your index and um, index finger and your thumb, you're you're asking your your buddy, are you okay? And if you don't get a reply, I am okay. But straight away, you can assume there is an issue. There's directional hand signals. There there's the signal to go up and to go down to ascend or descend, and then there's signals to indicate the amount of air you have left in your cylinder as you progress through the dive. So even when you have a team of very experienced divers, would there be a checklist to be undertaken in much the same way that perhaps a pilot taking off his aircraft has to run through a series of checks? It, it, that's, that's a very good analogy, Will, and it's very similar. There, there, is, a, there is a protocol, there isn't a, a formal checklist as such, but there is a protocol that, that um, our members practice before every dive where they go from head to toe and show all the pieces of equipment they, they have on them, how it may be used if the diver becomes debilitated for whatever reason, and then, as I said, the, the, um, the, the important hand signals that will be used throughout the dive. Staying with that airline analogy, whenever there is a tragedy in the air, there's an investigation, there are lessons learned. Is there anything similar to, to take some value from an unfortunate loss of life and to apply learning based on that? Is there anything similar in the water? There certainly is. The Irish, Wonder, or the Irish Underwater Council has a dedicated um, what we call incident officer. And the role of the incident officer is to gather um, reports from incidents, and they don't have to be fatal incidents, from any, any incident or, or a near miss. And the incident officer on an annual basis is uh, analysing the, uh, the, the information that they get from the, the reports, the incident reports or the near-miss reports, with a view to identifying a trend or to identifying you know, a recurring problem that may be addressed in training and, and, and may be addressed at club level. And would this lead to changes in practice, changes in policies on a regular basis or perhaps only occasionally? Thank you. Very, very occasionally, I would say the system that we're that we're using to dive and um, and the, the systems that have been implemented and our diving practice has proven to be very, very safe uh, and it, and is a, is a successful method. So it would be unusual, but not unheard of, for for the systems to be uh, for, to be amended uh, coming coming from um, incident reports. Niall Stapleton, thank you very much for being generous with your time and giving us some insight into the precautions that are taken before a dive. It's been great talking to you, albeit in unfortunate circumstances. That's yeah. Niall Stapleton, an experienced diver, former National Diving Officer with the Irish Underwater Council. And indeed, we would echo his, sen his sentiments in expressing our regrets and our sympathies to the families of those who have lost their lives in the water. And in particular, we think of the Flynn family in Kinnegad on the tragic loss of Kieran earlier this week. Time now on Midlands 103 is approaching 20 past 10.